So there's that. That needs to be addressed. Yeah, I'd definitely say that's the rear main. It's dust prevention. <laughs> <laughs> Undercoating. <laughs> Coating the driveway. But it's a cool rig. I'm telling you, I'd love to see another one. I can't tell uh. you about the amount of people that have commented on it that don't want to buy it, but think it's cool. See, just that, watch that. <laughs> yeah, that crank moved a lot. Let's go see. Cause, cause that was pouring out of there. Yeah. Probably would have been a good idea to run it before we took it apart too, but. Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're gonna continue on this homemade Volkswagen powered tractor I picked up about a couple of weeks ago. We got one video under our belt, which was pretty much just picking it up, going through it. It had a massive oil leak when uh, we grabbed it, so that was the first thing we wanted to try and address. So, on the previous video, we got the, the cab, this big cab that went over the top of it, got that removed, steering column out of it, transmission out of it, a bunch of other hardware that's in the back. Took the flywheel off, got the flywheel seal in it, fired it back up, and it seems to have cured that problem. It still needs a bunch more love. Uh, it doesn't have any brakes. The you know the engine still has to be gone through and, and serviced and all. And we have to still put all that stuff back together yet. There's half of it sitting on the bench right there. So having said that, I think our best bet, maybe we'll get the machine outside. It's warm enough that we can fire up a pressure washer and maybe clean some of the crap off of it before we start reassembling it. So I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go get her ready to uh, take a bath and uh, we'll bring you right back and start getting into wrenching. Well, I'd say it's a bit of an improvement. Gave time to dry off too. But get rid of a bunch of the crap. There was a, uh, what I thought was a trap door for the back where the rear end is. I pulled some pins out of it right there i thought it would drop down and allow us access to the rear but it doesn't i have a feeling it's for this gas tank assembly is allowed to kind of pivot down out of the way so that doesn't give us a a good view of the rear end not that concerned about it but i thought it'd be nice to see how it was built you know all right so i'm gonna get that starter assembly off of there and we're gonna start working on reassembling the clutch and figure out maybe a better way to get that engine the uh, transmission assembly back in place maybe we'll kind of take it apart a little well, we got the clutch. Again, it was pissing oil out the rear main seal, and it does contaminate it. I don't know if I got one upstairs. I'm going to take a quick peek. If not, we'll clean this up with brake clean. I don't think it's going <laughs> to... I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I don't think it's going to cause this problem because the tractor's geared so low. I don't think it's going to slip, but <laughs> now that I said it. Pressure plate. It's got some chatter on it. Let's take a flapper disc. We'll clean that up. We'll see if we have any, like, hot spots like blue spots that stay behind that'll show us the condition of that actually looked fairly decent i did find one thing that i'll show you in a second that cleaned up good i don't see any hot spots on there if I was putting this in the car I was restoring it i wouldn't do this but again this tractor's mostly going to be a toy for show and tell VW shows. The disc I took and cleaned with cleanser and then uh, carb cleaner afterwards. It, sometimes they can get impregnated with oil and they'll cause a problem with a slip later on. Does not look too bad, it's gonna be clean decent. But I did notice, where is it? Right there, look at the chatter marks, like something was cutting into the springs. These springs are here for like a buffer between here, between the engine and transmission when you let the clutch out to take some of the shock so it's not like a instant on or off these springs this this whole piece right here can kind of move a little bit from the disc and again this is the uh the input from the uh transmission and this is the input from the engine 
and they tie themselves together. So I'm not sure what that was hitting on. Let's see what it lines up with. My guess is that maybe the clutch pedal is allowed to go too far. So this, when you hit the clutch, this pushes down. There's a throw out bearing I'll show you on the transmission on the, uh, yeah. Uh, when you push your clutch in, you're actually pushing this throw out bearing, this um, pressure plate down with a throw out bearing. And that's what allows this half of the pressure to back off so the disc can spin. Uh, best way to show that. I'll probably show it later on when we're putting it together. But what locks the engine and transmission together is a clutch and the clutch is squeezed between the flywheel and this pressure plate. This pressure plate holds tension against it. Well, when you push the clutch pedal down, it relaxes, it creates a gap between here and here and takes the tension off of it. So my thought is probably it's just traveling too far and it's pushing through and it was touching those springs a little bit. They're not enough to worry about if they were like halfway through or so I'd, I'd have a little bit concerned that we'd break off a little piece, but I think we're all right. Maybe we'll put a stop on that clutch pedal. It can only go so far, like maybe a bolt or something underneath it. And we're going to need a clutch alignment tool, which there should be some input shafts or like that's different ones for different styles of transmissions. But I believe I have a actual transmission output shaft somewhere in here. If not, I think one of these will do. Where's the hiding? Right there, right in front of you. You didn't even say anything. So this clutch disc gets sandwiched between the flywheel and the pressure plate like we talked about. But the problem is, if you go to bolt that together, this has a lot of play. And you have to kind of get it right on the money so that when you try sliding the transmission in, you're not fighting between this part and the uh, pilot bearing that's in the center of it. So you need an alignment tool, which is that, line, aligns the center of that to the center of the clutch. So when you bolt it up, it's automatically kind of put right in the center. Then you can take your pressure plate and bolt that up. A way to tell like if your pressure plate still got a decent amount of tension is the gap. Like right now I'm looking at the airspace between the flywheel and the pressure plate. That's how much crush is going to be when I go and bolt that thing up. And let's go find yourself a hole. You kind of want to run it. So it's got six bolts and you kind of want to run them in evenly and put the tension on that. And draw it in all together you'll see I don't know if it'll show up on camera when I go to fast forward but you'll see this ring right here you'll see this ring kind of collapse in that's how much tension it's putting spring-loaded tension on that disc so I'll bring you back in a second let me get the bolts in it and we'll uh, probably use that air ratchet or something just to pick it up but Keep an eye on that. Yes, I don't know how well that showed up. Hopefully it did. But I'm just going to go over it with a wrench now because I, I want a good hand feel like how tight they are. I don't like that one. You'll feel they snug up. And then when we're done, we can just pull this right out of here and everything's aligned. I know I'm beating a dead horse for some of you, but some people just never have seen it before. So I'm going to go over kind of what we're doing. So now it's all sandwiched together. Now, if the transmission was on here, Power from the engine will be going right into the transmission and powering the wheels if it's in gear. If you push on this surface, these uh, hyperextend that side of the pressure plate and it comes away from the disc and then disc would be able to spin within there. Another thing you kind of look at too, you can see this, this thrust ring right here. If it's level with the back of it, if it was sitting on an angle, you definitely got uh, a clutch problem somewhere, but it's looking pretty decent. 
Hey, let's go get our bell housing, take a peek at that, and see if we can get that back on here. This is that bell housing, which is a, a Beetle transmission bell housing, and they cut it and then uh, set it up to adapt to the other um, transmission that's over there. But yeah, they just cut the whole half of the transmission right off of there. And this is the clutch lever that you hit the pedal, and there's that throwout bearing. And you hit pushes on the center of that pressure plate. And I'm going to just listen. That's a little on the noisy side. Yeah. I'm going to take a quick peek, see if I got one of those. Partial lane to VW stash. So this going to be the ones, it's not this style. It's going to be this one with the pivots. Oh, that one's definitely worse because it doesn't even turn. Is that a new one? Yeah, it's the wrong type. I'm fucked up too. There it goes. That's a new one in Scarali. No more. Add them to my shopping list. Wiggle that assembly in there. It's got to get, after this is in, we got to get bolts back on these uh, hard mounted motor mounts. So I'm going to have to pry up on the engine a little. It's going to go. Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to fight with. I get the tin in the way. That's a guillotine. <laughs> Let's uh, not stick our hand in there. This whole, uh, this tin I think has to be on the other side. Sure. Maybe not. I'm going to go tap that into place without sticking my fingers in there. This is holding us back. I don't I don't remember if this was on the other side of this lip. Hmm. I'll figure it out. Dropped the socket down the back there. I had to go fish it out with a magnet. Trying to show the differential that it's got. My guess is like early 30s Ford, maybe a truck setup. And maybe, I don't know if I had a drive shaft or I think those used like a solid uh, torque tube from the transmission back to the rear. But it kind of looks like that style, doesn't it? Anyway, you could recognize it through this little peephole. There you go. But I can show. Let's go take a peek underneath. Hey, there's got to be a way in there. I wouldn't think he would just weld his way in and not ever be able to address it. Like, how would you check the gear oil? So it looks like this whole assembly can come out. It's bolted here. It's like just one big skid plate. Let's go see what we got going back here. I told you I pulled a couple of them. Um, and that very back to that round that round hump looking thing is there was two pins I pulled out of there take another bolt there so he's cut the brake line so that they don't they can just be dropped problem is I think you need to do that gas tank and everything too there's where I pulled those pins yeah because that's all welded it's all solid I don't, this looks like the gas tank would flip down, doesn't it? Like whatever that hinge is right there. I would have liked to have cleaned that out. Yeah, he's got to cut out for the rear to go around it so he can drop it. 
I guess we'll screw with that if we have to. I think we'll just leave well enough alone. It's got a drain on the gas tank. That's good. All right, where were we? We were trying to get a transmission back in it. So I'll take a peek. Look at the beefiness of that front end, huh? You welded ball joints to the uh, uprights. Doesn't need any suspension, but it's got big, heavy ball joints. It's like Volkswagen tie rod ends. I don't know if they're Volkswagen spindles or not. Might be. You got a better look. Yeah, I think they are. Just all the backing plates and stuff have been removed. There's the bolts where the backing plate would be. Oh, that's probably VW. You know, he just modified them, cut them down to fit the width. What's it got for a steering box? Um, not sure. Definitely one tank though, huh? Oh, beefy that. And this pivots right here. That whole thing is able to swing on the big bolt that's in the center. It's all half inch thick. That's half inch thick right there. Yep. Alright, so that's still hanging up. We could drop that down, I think. And I think the next thing we have to do is, I think the steering column has to go in before we put the transmission forward. I think it was kind of, it was pinned in between the two of them. Let's go grab that and, and set it in there and see how this drops down and getting the top two bolts in with the starter in the, this eighth inch firewall has to get bolted through these points right here with the transmission, uh, with the uh, upper part of the bell housing. Straight down. So this probably bolted to the top of the transmission. I don't know, maybe, can we get, I, I think the problem was we couldn't get these, access to these bolts I thought was tight. Let's, um, come on. We can go clean that up a little bit. Yeah, no, that's good. It's gonna rotate like that. I'm gonna eyeball the trans. And I thought we had a problem trying to access those. It's that time. I wonder if we can try to make this thing maybe a little shorter to work with. It has uh, two pillar blocks in the back is the band brake that goes on and it's kind of goes like underneath the seat bracket so we had to try to yeah, the two of us wiggle that out of there and while somebody was cleaning it to be nameless they dropped it <laughs> that might be an issue i gotta heat that up and bend it back my little concern though is i don't know if it hit on here and bent this tab this way it kind of has that look doesn't it like it's out of whack a little i don't know if it was that's how it was or if I screwed it up. I guess we're going to find out real soon. Um, maybe we can... I thought this was pins, like roll pins going through. Here's that pilot shaft, the VW pilot shaft. Uh, maybe we can take this coupler apart. We'll put this on first and maybe we can get that transmission you know, a little bit easier to work with. I don't know if we can... Uh, you know, we only have to travel that far instead of that far for the engagement. Let's go see if we can get that off of there. I don't know about the back side right here. What we can do. Yeah, that's the that's the pin I was seeing. That so that one's got a pin going right through it to hold it. And I'm not sure. It looks like that's probably all one piece all the way to there. So I think we're just gonna have to take our lumps with that. But let's try taking that off of there. So it's homemade. What do you think? You made it out of metric or standard? Some of you guys are saying metric is standard. That's a metric Allen pack. Yeah. All right. We've got four of them holding it. Let's mark that real quick, just in case we want to index it the same way. Paint stick action. We'll go with that. 
See if that'll tap off of there. Don't think it's moving. Sometimes what people do is they'll put a set screw and have another set screw behind it. Let's see if that's the case. Nope. Go get some air assistance. I'm concerned that we're going to have a hard time getting that back together. find out. I'm going to clean that surface up real good with a wire wheel. Hopefully maybe we can get a little bit better uh, fit on it. Yeah, it's got four keys on it, four tapered keys. Did you ever have those times in life where you, you second guess what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, so that's got to go in like that. All right. All over but the heathen. Well, we might as well fix that bend while it's out. Let's give her some heat. Temper, temper. I think that did help as far as the distance, as long as it goes together, right? Give her a quick eyeball, make sure I'm not screwing something up. I gotta take apart, you know. I don't have anything like on the wrong side of something. That goes to there. And that's the master cylinder connection. Chain will be fine. Pillar block should be fine. Speak up now. It looks like you had the master cylinder set up maybe on this side at one time. Like, what's the deal with that? And that, it looks like he, he added to it, had the rod go across and work the clutch. Maybe he had to clutch in a, the uh, brake on opposite sides. I don't know. All right, let's go run that home. I think we're good. And uh, everything else, you could drop the firewall down. Get in there. Three of them are in. Of course, the last one was to fight on the alignment a little bit. Give her a slight adjustment. She can give her a start. Yeah. Hit it. Does it look good or does it look cross through it? I see what we run it home and see what we got. No, that's not getting enough. Guess that's it. 
and two in the front. I think I can drop that firewall down and get all that buttoned up. Strategic hits, baby. <laughs> all right, I gotta go chase a bunch of bolts. We'll get all that kind of tidied up. We'll get the starter in it, and uh, we'll bring you back. And may want to put those in before I get the starter. And I also got them. I gotta spin the engine over too to uh, get them in place. One down, four to go. Try to set that clutch up. Oh, this lever that was bent. And this is the pedal coming from the other side. It, I believe it was in that spot right there. You can tell by where the paint was worn. But if I tried doing that, I would actually be preloading that throw out bearing. That throw out bearing should not touch when you're not on the pedal. So that's touching the pedal. And now that throw out bearing is not spinning. If not, if you try doing that, that bearing is going to spin all the time. It's going to burn out. So it has to have that little bit of like, it's called free play. So we want to be right. Let's go try it on that one. See how that works out for us. And if that's good, we'll leave it there. Looks like he had you know, quite a bit of adjustment anyway. Three different spots for it to be in. I kicked that washer to the middle. It was supposed to be a spacer. And that feels pretty good. It's got free play in it. They did put a bumper on it to stop how far back the travel is. There we go. Let's give her a good push, make sure we got. Yeah. Feels like it should. Going fishing. I think I got her. Room down there. I gotta spin the rear end to get chain to watch me lose the other side. <laughs> All we need is to be able to get on the sprocket. I think I can get my tooth off. I, I think I got play down below. I got a couple of teeth off. I hate when that happens. You know what I mean? It's got that like slag, slag, sag in it. Let's see if I can get it. Is that it? Oh yeah. Come on. There you go. Quick, get the master link in it. <laughs> One of the rooms should have enough space to get it. Like that way or that way? Don't drop it down the hole. So close. If one of you would hold those two chains together so I can get behind there with a screwdriver and give her a little bit of persuasion. Go a long way. Don't lose it. Ha! Definitely snug. Let's pop her in neutral. I think. Nice. All right, what we got left? The uh, the brake band to go on. Yeah, that right there. Okay, let's go figure out how this thing went back in there. I'm guessing something like like that. Yeah, four bolts out of. Suck that right down. Neat. Work. Well, I think it's uh, pretty much wrapped 
up, put back together enough to put a battery in it and fire it up and, and see how you know the transmission in the rear and all that does and what the gear ratio is. But before we do that, let's um adjust the valves. Yeah, that has to be done when they're cold. Plus, we'll get an idea what kind of condition the engine is. We pop the valve covers off, we'll see how much crud is in there. So let's get set up, knock that out real quick, and then we'll throw a battery in it. And the way I like to go about doing that, you pop the distributor cap off. And you can tell where the rotor is, what cylinder it's facing. So these, this right here, this number one spark plug, I want that rotor facing towards number one. Not sure where it is now. See how lucky we get. Yeah, it's on number two. So I'm gonna uh, crank the engine over to that rotor faces right here and adjust number one. Then I'm gonna turn it 25, uh, 25% or 90 degrees to number two, point it towards spark plug number three and number four and adjust each cylinder as we go around. Yeah, so I'm just gonna crank it so that rotor faces. There's a little notch on the distributor, kind of telling you where it is too. So we'll just spin it over so it faces that. Now we can adjust number one. All right, it's truth time. Let's go see what this thing looks like inside. Well, I can tell that valve cover's been on there a long time. <laughs> Oh, she's rough. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look great. It's like there's a lot of corrosion. Is that uh, just gunk? I thought it was corrosion. Yeah, the oil hasn't been changed very um, regularly on this one, that's for sure. But it is what it is. So this is number one cylinder. We can go check this one first. And uh, can you tell? Does it show which fill gauge might be it? <laughs> So it's six thou, which is that one. And I own a few Volkswagen, so you can see the curve that's on it. So we're just gonna go see, that's way loose. Both of them have a lot of play in it. A lot, a lot of play. I'd say that's probably 12, probably double what it should be. I'm gonna, real quick, just look at the, the studs in the back. I wanna see if any of the nuts have backed off. You can only see four of them. Sometimes, they'll push off. I don't see anything though. I wonder if that's just water that was sitting in there, that, that gray color down below. All right, let's go adjust the valve. So we're just gonna crack them both loose. Holy. <laughs> Try to. Those are ridiculously tight to not crack. I'm gonna get a uh, six point socket on a ratchet. Let's see if I get them to break loose. I'm gonna round them off the corners. So I have a feeling it's so bound up that we're not gonna be able to adjust. Let's go see what happens. A lot of times the, uh, the nut will be seized to the screw. Joke there. No, that's good. Okay. So I'm going to back that off. Eh, no. You might be pulling these rocker shafts off and having to clean them. Yep. Because they are not turning. <laughs> Boy, they gummy. Yeah. I'm gonna have to take all these out, clean them on a wire wheel, so that they have the movement they should. Yeah, this thing sat for a very long time probably and not run, because they're all gonna get egged out on us. See that one will move. That one will just. For video purposes, let's just do one. And I'll take care of the rest on my own. Now I'm just looking for light drag. Go across that. Something like that. Generally, you go a little bit on the snug side because you crank it down, they, they kind of loosens up. Yeah. That's not 
bad. It could be a little, a little on the tighter side. Stop it. Kind of hold that position, just give her a hair. So I'm going to go clean all these up and take care of the valve adjustment and I'll bring you back. The engine was a little kind of clacky too when we started it up. I didn't know if it was like bottom end noise or what. We're still going to have to change oil on this thing too, but I want to heat it up and get the a bunch of the sludge picked up in the oil and we'll see what that looks like. The strainer will probably be really gooey also. I hope this thing has access to it. <laughs> I haven't even looked under to see what's under there for that. Well, I must say, we're on to the next cylinder. First time I've had to do this to get one to get free. A little heat on it. I can't get this one to turn. This one I think I got going. Yeah. So each cylinder I gotta do that, take them out, hit them on a wire wheel, clean them up. It's gonna take a minute. So much for adjusting the valves cold, huh? Yeah, you can see how long it was parked, moisture got in, even like rust inside the valve cover. Oh, is that gasket on there? They're not glued on either. They just sit on there. <laughs> Get rid of that. I'll go over the parts washer. I'll wash this up. Even get in a little wire wheel. I don't want this rust kind of getting in into the engine, you know. So the valves are all adjusted. I can put it on top of the lobe. Look at that point gap. It looks okay. At some point, we need to change the points. I want to check the... Um, Vacuum advances the vacuum hose going to the distributor. And if you draw on that, you suck on that. Hold on. And it holds too. So the vacuum advance is working. That should be okay. If you kept being able to draw air or if it didn't move down below, you would have a, more than likely the diaphragm would be gone inside there, but it seems to be all right. All right let's go pop the rotor back on there and uh, cap, put a battery in it. Yeah, 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 I know, calm down. I get it. Which one of you did that? Snap it in half. I see she fires up without dumping any gas down the carb. So we want choke and we gotta hit the throttle. I want the accelerator pump works. I don't see anything squirting in. That's another thing that we need to address is the carburetor, but let's see what we get. Choke off. Wants to go. Needs a battery too. Let's get real. Bit of throttle. How we do this? Come on. A little bit more gas. I don't want to rev too high. Sounds like we might have picked up a little bit of exhaust leak. Engine's a lot quieter. And dead. Alright, let's go give her a little more choke. A 
lot more choke. <laughs> Fuel on it. Let's give her some air. That gas is old too, so. Yeah, we got a cross leak. Should stay running in a minute. One more. When you do that, it draws raw fuel in. Grab a light. We got a hole in the manifold. Kind of sucks. I think that header pipe in there's got a leak somewhere. Definitely not as clacky though. <laughs> I can let that warm up a little bit. We'll start running it through the gears, we'll see how the transmission and clutch and all that stuff work. That me. Now we'll let it warm up. Got a generator light on. Let's go get a, a meter. We'll put it on the battery. We'll see if we're making any voltage. Actually, if we disconnect it, if it dies, we're not charging. Yeah, so it's not charging. We gotta look into that. a fast tractor than tall gear that thing was moving it's idling right now in third that's probably 10 mile an hour at least just at idle to fall off the jack and shoot through the wall. Well, that's good. That's how the clutch is. Reverse. That's a good speed. First gear, forward and reverse should push pretty good. Not that we can't change it up anyway. Let's go uh, hit the emergency brake, see if it'll stall it out. I don't know if it'll do it in first. <laughs> Definitely slowed it down. 
Yeah, we got an oil light on. I think it might be just because it's idling too low. Fire it up one more time, put it in neutral. Yeah. All right, so we're not charging. Are we looking for pissing out the bottom? I think pretty good. That's not from that, that's from something else. The exhaust leak kind of sucks though. I don't know, it, it seems like it's up in that heater box. Again, these are custom made too. My guess it's got like a, a pinhole somewhere around there. We should caught that earlier. He was taking care of it with the uh, sheet metal off, you know. Might be able to get it out of there. Might be able to get that whole heater box right out. Looks like he's got like a, an access plate that unscrews right there. This means nothing. This is just an outside tin. That's not the exhaust pipe. I wonder if it's right there. Can we get that lucky? I don't think so. Well, that's something to worry about at a different time. Can we see the drain pan? Drain pan. The screen. Yeah, let's get that uh, oil chain. Now we got it warmed up. Let's get the uh, oil out of it. Get that strainer cleaned out. Get rid of some of that crud that's in there. Probably wouldn't hurt to uh, run some kerosene through it too and uh, let it clean the engine out, but we'll change the oil. We'll let it run for a while. Maybe at the, it's not gonna get much use, but at the end of the show season, we'll uh, do that, bring it, flush it out a little bit better. Might get a mirror and look at that exhaust system a little bit better. I don't think it was that noisy at first. The valves are a lot quieter. It sounded like the, I thought the bottom end had some noise to it, but no. It should leave like black soot stain eventually. I just hope it's not down inside there. I still gotta take the whole screen down, but it's got a center drain plug. Yeah, it's looking kinda watery. And very slow to drain, so that means that screen is really plugged up because it has to go through the center of the screen to get to the drain plug. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it for about 20 minutes. There's three quarts that are in there, or should be at least. The screws are out of it. Let's see if we can get the plate down. Can I get this one? Oh, yeah. See how much sludge is on that? That's what I expected. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I would say this 56 year old engine probably hasn't had its oil changed since it was put together as a tractor. So that's probably a 40 years worth of crap sitting in there. We still have to get the screen out yet too. That's not all of it. We still have to get this down. We could trash it if we have to. I got extras. It's like a metal screen. Look at the sludge that's in that. Oil is supposed to pass through that. You can make an oil pressure problem, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna get a little sweep in the bottom of the block. Yeah, it's got some sludge. It's not terrible. But it ain't great. Again, this is just a toy tractor for the most part. It's uh, not a car gonna be going on the road, but we're gonna. Try to give her our best, as best chance at life that we can without going crazy. All right, so I'm gonna wash that up. I'm gonna go get some new gaskets. We'll put all this back together and throw some oil in it. That's what it's supposed to look like. Not bad. That's yeah, like 2.7 quarts in there. Let's uh, fire her up, hopefully. Watch our oil light. We all the way down at idle. Make sure that light stays off. Yeah, let's give her.
<laughs> Definitely gotta go through that carb. Go ahead and run a little bit, that's good. Well, I think we got at least the major parts taken care of. The heavy lifting, I should say. It almost sounds like it. Let's take this hose off. This is what this is where the charge of air comes from. And if I open that up. Feels like it's right at where the wall is. Might even be the gasket. Looks pretty good though. I think just manhandling this pin might bore through. If it's anywhere. Inside here, we can fix it. If it's inside the under the skin, it's going to be a problem. Let's um. So the charging light. Sometimes you can push on the brushes, and they'll go. Let's go grab a little screwdriver. like the spring. One on the bottom too that's harder to get to. That's still on. Should be the voltage regulator. One down below. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try that one while it's running for obvious reasons. Okay. So run that plow up. that vacuum hose off from the distributor. That's it, that's an intake leak. There we go. Oh, I don't know if it'll stay running. Yeah, so it's got no air fuel mix. The carb's dirty. So th there's no idle circuit. Probably the best way to say it. So that carb's gotta come get apart and get clean. Let's uh, let try. Flicking that uh, bottom brush on that generator. Yes. Can you see why I didn't want to do it while it's running? Yeah, sometimes you just kind of hang out their brushes, don't want to touch. There's a way to test the generator. You run power to it, and it should spin like an electric motor. All right. I don't think that did anything. Let's give it a shot though. Throttle. Choke. Right, yeah, if we back that out a little bit, it will probably help, but the carb's got to get clean. Yeah, it's kind of hunting. Okay. Keep forgetting where the key
he is. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think that's about as far as I want to try to get done today. We got, like I said, all the heavy lifting is kind of out of the way. Hopefully, you know, as far as taking engines and transmissions and stuff in and out of the tractor. Seems like the drivetrain is pretty decent. Got a good engine. Runs on four cylinders. Transmission seems like it's fine. Rear end is spinning and we're popping or cracking, you know, until we put a load on and actually push something. There's still a possibility that something can come up, but everything's so built so heavy on this. I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. But having said that, we still have a bunch of stuff to try to get knocked out. We get the exhaust leak to fix, because once the cab is on, we're going to get polluted with fumes on the inside of it. That tire goes flat. It's leaking all the way around the rim. It's not charging. We need a master cylinder. I'm sure that one has probably pretty much had it. Um, gonna order. That's a dual. Dual circuit does be for a 67 and an up beetle, but it only has one circuit coming out of it for the two rear brakes. So... I don't know if it would be wise just to try to replace what they have modded in there or just get one of the single ones with a single line. I guess I'll deal with that at another time, right? Yeah, so we need brakes set up. The, figure out what's going on with the charging system. We have no headlights working. And what else we got? I'm sure we'll find other stuff. Again, that exhaust leak. Probably have to take that whole heater box right out of there and we'll try to find out where that hole is on there. Go, we gotta go through the carburetor. There's there's a, still a decent amount of stuff to take care of. All right, guys, with that, I'm gonna go sign off. I wanna thank all of you, really, for just hanging out with me and uh, doing some wrenching on stuff. I never, if you ever would ask me when I was a kid growing up, if I'd be making videos uh, for people to watch wrench on stuff, I'd think you were nuts. <laughs> I was nuts, one of the two. All right, guys, till the next one. I'll see you later.